new GPUs from NVIDIA aren't too far off now, possibly in September. So let's talk about a PC month for the month of August and what should you do if you need to buy a PC. So let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button. Are you looking to buy a PC or build one? Leave a comment below so I can know what you think. So let's talk about the PC building guide or buying guide for August of 2020. Right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you guys, don't buy a GPU right now. NVIDIA is gonna announce their new 3000 series GPUs next month. Tentatively, it seems like the rumors are pinpointing somewhere around September 9th. And as general, as NVIDIA does, most likely we're gonna get the higher end GPUs like the 3080, 3080 Ti. There was even some rumors of a 3090, which just would be like a monster card. I'm guessing it'd be something like their Titan card or something like that, but put into the regular series. So while on this first batch of announcements we may not see the initial 3060 or 3070 the more mid-range cards we're definitely going to see the higher end cards like nvidia likes to start with so if you guys need to build the system now if you can like 99 percent of the time i would wait let's see what nvidia is going to announce and even when those are announced and the new stuff starts rolling in you may be able to get some significant discounts on sort of the previous generation so even if you're not looking to buy a new 3000 series gpu you may be able to get some some nice discounts on the previous generation and just remember that typically Nvidia doesn't discount their stuff really really steeply because they like to maintain a sort of status quo on the market but you generally can have some savings like even today like a 1080 Ti from last generation it's still not extremely cheap but it's a lot more affordable than it used to be and it performs well for a lot of gamers that are playing a 1080p or something like that so just remember wait if you can to buy a GPU because the NVIDIA 3000 series is going to have some pretty nice advancements, especially in RTX and ray tracing. I think that's where it's going to make its bulk of its gains. Of course, in regular FPS as well, you're going to get some pretty nice gains. But in general, it looks like ray tracing will be better optimized in this new generation and just work better. That's going to give you not only better graphics, but better optimizations for your FPS. It's going to give you better shadows and better reflections in water, all those things that we like to see when we're playing a very realistic game. So if you're building or buying a PC in the month of August, I would recommend that you wait. Of course, you're always going to be waiting for the next generation to come out or the next hottest hardware. But in terms of GPUs, it's a good idea to wait because it's not like they're replaced every six months or every year, like a phone maybe, or even a processor or motherboard. Typically, GPUs seem to be lasting maybe two or three years, and you can even hold on to it longer. You know, the 2080, 2080 Ti, it came out a few years ago at this point so it's not like you need to upgrade that often that's why it's worth it to wait whatever it is a month or two months until these new cards hit the shelves because not only are you going to be able to get better performing gpus possibly for a better price you can even pick up the current generation for cheaper like i mentioned before so let's talk about the other components of your pc and what you should do in case that you do already have a gpu and you're building the rest of your system everything else it's pretty safe to buy i mean the ryzen 3000 series they just came out with like the 3900 XT, which is going to have a little bit beefier performance compared to the 3900. Intel, of course, a few months ago released their 10th generation, like the 10900K. So in terms of the CPU, I'd say those are all pretty fresh. You have a pretty nice selection between AMD Ryzen, the Intel 10th generation. On the higher end, you do have the Threadrippers, like the 24, 32, or even 64 cores that are just bonkers. On the Intel enthusiast side, unfortunately, like the 10980XE 18 core, was supposed to come out a long time ago. I really haven't seen any in retail. The only 10 series X299 processors that I've seen at like Micro Center have been generally like the 10 core, like the 10900X. But in general, I think Intel probably got the note that not too many people were going to buy these because the reviews when they came out were pretty dismal, especially compared to AMD's Ryzen 3900X, 3950X, not to mention the Threadripper, which absolutely thrashed anything that the X299 platform could handle and then for ram not much has changed if you're on ryzen i still recommend getting like a 3600 megahertz the timing goes really nicely with the ryzen amd platform if you're on intel generally 3200 megahertz seems to work pretty well prices are pretty fair right about now if you're doing just gaming get 16 gigabytes to 8 gigabyte stick i think you should be fine most games will be perfect with that now if you're going to be doing some video editing or more content creation i would just get 32 gigabytes to be safe now for your hard 
hard drives and solid state drives. More and more, I recommend getting the fastest possible drive that you can, just because it makes such a big difference in transferring files and opening up games and doing content creation. Fast hard drives, especially M.2 NVMe drives, have gotten cheaper and they're faster and faster. Some of the speeds are pretty ridiculous. So if you can definitely fit that into your budget, I would get that. Something like the Samsung 970 Evo, or if your budget is a little bit tight, I do like the WD Blue, the 2.5 inch solid state drive. It's not NVMe, but it's still pretty fast. It'll give you a pretty snappy experience and you can get like one terabyte for in like the low hundreds. So it's definitely a great value. And of course, in terms of cases, not too much has changed. I still kind of recommend the really nice build quality cases. Recently, I've done a bevy of builds in the various Be Quiet cases, and I continue to be really impressed with them, starting all the way at the 900, down to the 700 and 600. I have a 700 right here um, with a 10900K in it. I love the build quality, the aesthetics, and the price are pretty good on these cases as well, so definitely look out for that. On the other end here, I do have a fractal design case, those are always very good. The Corsair cases, it can be hit or miss. Some of them I like, some of them are okay. And of course, the Lee and Lee Dynamic and the XL version are always as popular as ever because you can do really nice and simple or complicated builds in them. They're very flexible. You get pretty good airflow. Some people are tired of seeing Lee and Lee Dynamic builds, but every time I see one that somebody does a nice job, I still think aesthetically it's a very nice case, so I don't really mind it too much. And in terms of power supplies, I mean, we did have some serious shortages um, recently. It seems like it's getting a little bit better. Recently, I've tried power supplies from Main Gear. Looks really cool. I did a video on that. Be Quiet has great power supplies. And of course, as usual, EVGA and then some Corsair power supplies as well. So basically, to sum everything up, the GPUs are going to be the big news items here. We have new GPUs coming from NVIDIA and AMD is going to be pretty much right behind them, hopefully within the next few months, with an answer to not only NVIDIA's mid-range GPUs like they've done with the 5700 XT, but hopefully they bring the heat and some really high-end GPUs to sort of really pressure the 3080, 3080 Ti. That way we'll get better and better performance from both sides, just like happened on the AMD versus Intel CPU side. If we can get the same thing going, on the GPU side, I think that's definitely going to be fantastic for the consumers as well as for the technology as a whole. So August is definitely not the ideal time to be building a PC because of these new GPUs, but everything else I think is pretty mature in the market. I mean, the cases, water cooling, the CPUs, RAM, hard drives, solid state drives, they've all been around, I think, for most of the year. So that's going to be my main point. If you need a GPU and you can wait, that's definitely the way to go. But otherwise, if you have a GPU already, most of the other components, everything is nice and stable in the market. So you should be able to find pretty much whatever you're looking for build a pretty nice gaming system. So those are my thoughts for buying hardware in the month of August. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.